Well, good afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for uh, doing this, serving in this very important capacity. Um, we have, first of all, I just want to let everyone know that we reached out to everyone, and we, uh, Stephen Banks has reported that we heard affirmative that everyone could make it, so hopefully Mr. Patrick will show up here in a little bit. Um, we are uh, providing virtual feeds through GoToMeeting and also through um, YouTube, so that is, uh, we're live on, on that as well. So this, since this is the first meeting, uh, we were hoping that everyone would be willing to do introductions and just uh, you know, simply uh, introduce yourself to the group, go around the room, and then what we can do is tell you about some of the staff members who will also be helping out with this endeavor. So um, Marcy, I don't know which way you'd prefer to go or who you'd like to start with. <laughs> Does anybody want to volunteer? <laughs> go ahead. Ah. <laughs> I saw him there, brave soul. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to know? What do you want to start I with? think just your name and uh, this. Okay, John Whitmer. Um, I live in West Wichita. My wife and I do. We own a small business here in Wichita. I served for four years in the state legislature and uh, I'm happy to be here, happy to help. And, um, appointed by Jeff Bluval. And, and if I could add one thing, what yeah. is your favorite thing about Wichita? Ooh, um, cool. The. <laughs> As you can tell by, uh, sadly, my uh, ever-expanding gut, um, <laughs> the plethora of restaurants. We are blessed to have a phenomenal opportunity for culinary choices and music theater in Wichita are probably our two favorite things. A good night out uh, for entertainment and food. Hi, I'm Javen Gonzalez. I live in West Wichita. Uh, I was appointed by Maggie Ballard, and I think my favorite thing about Wichita is the farmer's markets. Ooh. Yeah. Cool. Agreed. Janet Johnson, District 3, appointed by Mike Hoheisel. And of course, my favorite thing about Wichita is its outstanding city government. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Marcy Gregory, I am, I was appointed by um, Brandon Whipple, and I live in East Wichita. I live on uh, Willowin Golf Course. My husband's a big golfer, so um, I like to spend a lot of time outside, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this group. So, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Lamont Anderson. I'm from West Wichita. I'm a small business owner, entrepreneur. I um, was appointed by Councilman Fry from District 5. Uh, formerly, prior to that, I served at the county level under Commissioner Dennis. Um, so I would say my favorite thing about Wichita would be the passion of people that make up our community. Um, we have a, a very beautiful spirit within our community that certainly I believe our best days are ahead and, and getting those people uh, to that place is, is well, why we're here. So thank you. Hey y'all, I'm uh, Joseph Tex Dozier. I was appointed by Councilman Brandon Johnson. I serve as his District Advisory Board Chair and I also serve on Pete Meisner's uh, Citizens Advisory Board uh, as well as being a Wichita Wagon Master and, and part of some other organizations. I'm uh, a political activist and consultant. Um, by background, uh, in the last few years, I've focused more and more on democratization training and party building, as well as election observation abroad. Um, so I've seen the good and bad and ugly of redistricting and even initial districting in countries that are democratizing for the first time. So it's an honor to serve and, and, be, and be here today. And my favorite thing in Wichita, um, I think I, I was gonna go with Lamont's answer originally, but what I've kind of come to fall in love more and more with is the arts and music scene here. I'm um, getting to know more of the musicians and even playing a bit myself. It's been a blessing and very exciting. Well, we are so grateful that you're all here. Um, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the staff that will be assisting you with this civic endeavor. And so uh, Sharon Dickgraff from the Law Department uh, will be helping out. She's well versed in the ordinances. Uh, we have Stephen Banks from the Planning Department. So he does a lot of demographics and numbers analysis. We have Mike Kohlmeyer from the IT department, so he uh, runs uh, the GIS system uh, with his comrades, with his folks there, and um, he'll be showing you the system and how we can uh, do some analysis on some of the different uh, boundary changes or shifts. And then I'm Scott Wadel from the planning department, so it's a, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you again for serving. Now, now that you're here, now that we've done introductions, we're gonna do some swearing um, <laughs> in terms of getting people sworn in. So 
Uh, Jamie Buster, the city clerk, is here to do that. I think I just saw Patrick outside, so he should be here momentarily. Yeah, it looked like he was on a phone call when I came in. Even. Oh, well, yeah. great. It might be worth, yeah, waiting just a little bit. Okay. I think while we're waiting, I guess, uh, Steve and Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the redistricting processes that you've done in the past? I think it was going back to the 1990s? 1998 was the first process I was involved in, and it was an off-census And then, Mike, how about your history? How far back do you go with it? My history kind of fits right after he got done. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was involved in 2000 and 2010, or you know, 2002, 2012. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been involved in that process. Utilizing interactive maps to be able to smooth out the process. Yeah. And then, Sharon, how about? How about your experience? Um, I was involved in 2012, um, and we'll be involved again in 2023. Wonderful. Well, Mr. Penn, welcome. You're just in, just in time to be uh, sworn at, so or rather to do the swearing in. It's, right. it's okay if it's not spelled right. to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Kansas and the Constitution of the State of Kansas and faithfully discharge the duties and faithfully discharge the duties of the Commission of Electors for the City of Wichita, Kansas, so help me God. You bet. So the next item on the agenda is for uh, chairperson comments, and so I'd like to reintroduce Chairperson Gregory and uh, give, let everyone know that uh, Marcy serves in this capacity because she was appointed to be the chairperson by the city council, and that is a traditional role that the mayor's appointee serves in. So thank you for being willing to serve as the chairperson. Thank you, it's my honor. Do we want to re rewind just a minute and give um, Mr. Penn a, a opportunity we all introduced ourselves so would you like to just take a few minutes and introduce yourself and say who um, you were appointed by sure thank you. thank you madam chair my name is patrick penn uh, i am from the uh, house 85th district state representative and i am out of city council district number two appointed by councilwoman becky tuttle uh, i think as vice mayor i serve as your vice chair for this particular panel very pleased to be here with each of you and look forward to doing good work on behalf of all of our citizens thank you Excellent, thank you very much. 
and again, thank you all for giving up your evening to be here with us and, and do this process, take part in this process. This is a very important thing that we've been charged with, and um, I hope you all share my um, feeling of honor and pride that uh, Mayor Whipple appointed me and each one of your council members appointed you. It's a very important thing that we're charged with doing. It's, it has to be, by law, done, I believe, every 10 years, and so it is a, an extreme privilege for us to do this. And so I kind of want to go over a little bit of decorum. Um, I know I've been involved in numerous boards, and every subject imaginable, it doesn't matter how innocent or innocuous you think it is, can be contentious. And so I would just ask that we all um, treat each other and conversations and uh, exchanges with respect and civility and um, especially I'm going to insist on that with regard to our staff. Um, I've seen in my past history um, people that think that city staff's uh, salaries are paid for by their tax dollars and that gives them a pass to be rude or insulting and I absolutely disagree with that completely so I insist that um, they're here to give us information and guidance, and so please let's give them the respect that they deserve and, and need. So, um, are there, we've got policies and procedures to follow, and I believe um, most of you all have probably gotten a copy of the ordinance so that you know that there are guidelines that we're to follow, and um, that's what um, Scott and Stephen and Mike are here to um, kind of guide us through this process, and they're going to make sure that we do it correctly so we don't have to redo it <laughs> and try to hopefully get it to uh, the mayor and the council um, in a timely fashion. Um, we do have, there's a, a deadline that has to be met. So um, I just want to, again, make sure that everybody's uh, kind of on board with that. Does anybody have any questions about any part of the procedure that we're going to be going through? You just kind of want to hit it as it comes along? Is everybody comfortable with me referring to you by your first names? If you if you would, okay, good. I'm, I'm a very informal person, but I, I understand that there are people that would prefer to be addressed by a title, and if that's, your, if that's your desire, I will certainly comply with that. So please let me know if you're not comfortable with me calling you John or Javen or Janet, so please let me know. Um, again, if there are no further questions, I'll move it on to, um, I believe Sharon is next up. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, I'll wait a minute until my handouts get passed around. I'm here to give just a brief overview of the, the redistricting process. What you have before you is an outline that I actually used for a legal presentation on redistricting a couple years ago, as well as the Charter Ordinance 173. Um, Charter Ordinance 173 is really our roadmap um, as to what you are required to do and what the city's ordinances require you to do. Um, essentially, your job is to um, present district maps to the city council um, that divide the city up into six equal portions. Um, the ordinance requires that those populations be no less than 5%, um, either high or low on either side. Um, as we go through this process, and I think uh, Stephen Banks will give more information about areas of growth, um, other things that you consider as part of this process, um, the ordinance requires that you take into consideration certain items um, one is that you want to be as compact as possible. You don't want strips of lines going here and there, um, that we have to follow um, the precincts that are outlined by the election commissioner. Um, I unfortunately did have to do redistricting over. Um, in 2012, the precincts were changed after the council voted on it, so I've, I've, I've had a do-over. Um, we've been told that they are in the process of getting those finalized much quicker than they were um, in 2012. Um, we cannot use uh, numbers of registered voters or party lines or partisan data. Um, so staff will be presenting to you raw data 
um, as far as neighborhood associations can be considered, um, areas of, of town can be considered, um, but, but any other kind of debt is really um, precluded both by a federal law, case law, as well as the city's ordinances. Um, the, your purpose is to come up with maps. Um, the city council can then review those maps. They can adopt them. They can revise them. They can send them back um, for further clarification. Um, at the end of my presentation, you'll see maps, maps, and more maps. Um, the last time we did this, we had a lot of maps. Um, and it's amazing that if you move one precinct to a different district, um, what effect that can have, not only on numbers, but just how, how contiguous, contiguous um, that area is. Um, so as we go through this process, we're gonna work closely with the GIS folks um, who can help us look at all of those maps. Um, the last thing I do want to talk about is timing. Um, the ordinance requires that the maps be presented to the city council no later than the end of September. Um, I think the city council has directed us to try to get those sooner by the end of August, um, which is a very quick timeline. The goal is that, so that uh, we and staff will have time to take those maps out to the neighborhood associations and or to the DABs for input. Um, lastly, this group is subject to the Kansas Open, Me Open Meetings Act. I think most of you have been on some sort of a board. Um, generally, uh, discussions need to occur in this room as part of a meeting. Um, if you have questions of staff, I think it would be prudent to send those to Scott, and then Scott then can reply back. Um, the biggest issue for uh, open meetings violations are reply all and emails. Um, it's a dangerous thing. Um, so if I answer Scott a question and I reply to everybody and then we start talking about, well, you know, Sharon's wrong because Janet knows more about this process than I do, um, then we have this discussion um, which would be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. So as from a legal standpoint, the more conversations we can have um, here amongst the group is better. As you can see, we are being uh, live streamed on Facebook Live. Um, these meetings are open to the public and, and we will work through what process um, the board as a whole wants to take any public comments as we go through this process. So questions at this point? They can't have more than a 5% deviation. Hold on for a second, where am so I at? Plus or minus one. Is that right, Stephen? Yeah. Yes. So for example, District 2 right now is off. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And would need to shrink. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, um, I don't know whether Scott was sending out staff email addresses or not, but. What we'll do is, um, people should have the contact information of both Stephen and myself, so feel free to contact. I, I would encourage you to contact both of us. Yeah, I think that, that makes way. sense. Stephen can make sure that between the two of us, we'll give a timely answer, so. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. All right. I believe we're up to item four, and that is Stephen. Well, good evening, commissioners. <clears throat> Go ahead and get this PowerPoint up here. One thing, uh, just a clarification. We are actually on YouTube rather than Facebook Live. And, and Steve, you'll have to share your screen to go to me. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Let's go down here. Over. Oh. And then do the circle and then do screen and share. Yeah. Okay, so now you're sharing your screen. Perfect. Okay. So then we go. All right. Well, Sharon's already been over the ordinance, uh, and so I won't belabor that point. 
This is the districts uh, as they stand now. Uh, we obtained 2020 census data in order to look at where the districts are in terms of population. Now, these numbers were done back in late 2020. We've had a couple of annexations, and we've also gotten the uh, election precincts uh, mapped with census block numbers, which are the smallest geography. So we will be using the numbers in the uh, election precinct numbers, which are just a little bit different from these, but they are within the same percentages as we go to this, where we are comparing the districts as far as a percent of total for the city as a whole, and you see the two outliers, District 2 at 7.3 percent over the average, and uh, District 3 uh, at five and a half percent below the average number. The average number uh, down here, 66,255. Uh, so the process here is uh, council uh, appointed uh, you folks on uh, July 5th and 12th. We're having our first meeting tonight. Uh, July and August will hopefully be moving toward uh, that recommendation on August 31st. The council will then get the recommendations that you provide, uh, make any changes uh, they see necessary, perhaps come back to you, uh, but then they want to go out to the DABs and get a review process going. Uh, it may be neighborhood associations. That's still a little bit up in the air. We'll uh, look to them for clarifications on how they want to do that. We've done both in the past. Uh, then city council has to adopt a final recommendation by December 31st. So things to consider, the election precincts are um, what you have to use to build the districts. They are the building blocks in this. We have to maintain reasonably compact areas and uh, maintain the integrity of broadly cohesive areas of interest. Normally, we've considered those to be uh, neighborhood associations and homeowners associations. We do avoid uh, number of registered voters by party. We avoid race and ethnic data, as well as income data. Those can become very partisan things. We're looking for more cohesive things uh, that have to do with uh, more like neighborhoods. The resulting districts must be within plus or minus 5%, so the range is 62,942 to 69,568. And then one th final thing to think about, which isn't in the ordinance, but we're wanting to look long term, is think about the future. Where is growth occurring? So we'll get to that in a moment. These are the current uh, city council districts with the precincts. And you have a map of this in front of you. This is, uh, without the districts, a blank map. We will be providing you. You already have paper copies of this. We will be sending you a PDF version of this, as well as posting it on our website. These are the neighborhood associations uh, within uh, Wichita. And these are uh, homeowners associations, uh, mostly towards the outskirts with the neighborhood associations being more toward the center of the city. This is the Wichita Future Growth Concept Map out of the Comprehensive Plan. If you're focused on the kind of tan and brown bubbles and there's some crosshatch areas, these represent, the tan are the uh, residential growth areas, the brown are the uh, growth areas for employment or jobs, and the hatched areas are where we see kind of a mixture of these things occurring. 
This has been very accurate for the last 10 years with uh, well over 90% of the development occurring within these bubbles. So I've overlaid these bubbles on the uh, six council districts. As you can see, District 5 and 2 have quite a bit of these bubbles, as does District 4. Uh, a little less so for 6 uh, and 1, and hardly any in 3. So you could see why uh, District 2, you know, has grown in population so much, and District 3's fell kind of behind. Uh, it's kind of landlocked by McConnell and the uh, industrial uh, improvement districts uh, to the southeast, uh, so that it has been a problem. Fortunately, they are kind of next to each other, so maybe that provides part of the solution. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but one more thing is, uh, with these paper maps, as well as the PDF that we'll be sending you, uh, we would uh, like for you to sketch out uh, and turn these in or email them in with ideas. If we could have a couple ideas from each uh, elector to uh, submit ideas. Um, we would like to have those by the end of the day Monday so that we have time to process uh, these for the next meeting. So if you would send those to me, S Banks, S B A N K S, at wichita.gov. Two, two, yeah. Yeah, two per. And if you have other ideas, uh, let's put it this way. Let's say you have three ideas, prioritize them. And if we don't get something from someone or only one, then we might be able to kick an extra one in. But we'll save anything over the 12 for a future meeting. We need to give staff enough time to process these and you know get them ready for the next meeting so that you can actually, you know, have something to be really looking at. Okay, I think that's all I have at this point. I did want to ask a question. Um, I think this came up in, when we had a conversation yesterday. Um, it's kind of imperative that we make sure that we don't accidentally zone our council member out of, we don't want to move them out of their district and because that would cause problems for all of us. So do we have any way of knowing where they are so we don't inadvertently do at, that? At this point, we don't. I called the council. Oh, oh you do have something? OK. That's a good, that's a good point. We, yeah. Perhaps, perhaps, yeah. Uh, perhaps what we can do is if you come up with your, perhaps if you come up with your ideas first, and then we can do a check of those as part okay. of this review process, so that you're, what we don't want to do is give the perception that we're drafting it on the basis of where the, the individual members live. Okay, okay. But yeah. I understand also, you're, you're maybe coming from the perspective of, well, what would be the impacts, and if there are gonna be impacts to elected like officials, we'd like to know that as, as we're reviewing these scenarios. And so, how about if you go ahead and you can work on your scenarios, and then we can do a review uh, to check to see which precincts uh, the council members live in and then to report back if we see that there would be any changes. Okay, very good. That's a good suggestion. Would, would that be helpful for folks? Yeah. On this map here, you've got obviously the two numbers here. The top number, I believe, is the precinct number. What's the number in red below? Is that the oh, number? Oh, that is citizens? population. Red is population. population. Perfect, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to have a map of the neighborhood associations for us that we could take home with us? Good, yeah. Uh, we could send that to you. Yeah. Uh, we could send it out, yeah. 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 It's That's helpful. And the um, Stephen, could you go back to the slide, uh, the one right before the map that had like the things you can't do? Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So my, my question would probably be more for Sharon. 
is there is there a legal point somewhere, Sharon, uh, where income is considered partisan data? We have never utilized income um, in the past as part of this discussion. Um, I would need to do some research. I mean, is it partisan data? No. Um, but if you look at the, the the criteria that are used, the, the one that would come closest would be maintaining. Um, like interests, um, so I, I don't know that, that I believe that income data would, would be appropriately used, but let me do some research to confirm that. Okay, so thinking back to the last redistricting, that would be why College Hill was so upset that they got moved into District 1, I assume, because it's not a like. That, that, that was a concern the last time that we did redistricting, that's true. Okay, but there's really, but, all right, so. And, and, and I think that when Stephen was talking about the neighborhood associations, the homeowners associations, mm -hmm. um, that's the type of like interests that, that we have historically used um, as a group. I was looking to see, because there used to be a little bit more guidance in the city's charter ordinance talked about the, the like interest or the like guidance, but we have not historically used e income um, as a basis. But there's nothing that would prohibit it? I would need to do some research. Okay, thank you. But that would be like taking Delano and splitting it or something like, isn't that kind of what, you're, what you mean yes. by trying to not take a community? Yes. So like take the Delano district, because we own a, a rental property in Riverside. And you wouldn't want to take the Riverside neighborhood and say, okay, North Riverside in one, and say, that's what you mean, I, I, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you. Though uh, Delano did get split, and I don't think they mind having two representatives they could go to. So, you know, it, there, oh, and there are some, dis, some Chill, associations that are very large. It'd be very hard. Sure. Uh, there's a, like a South... Southeast Association that takes up like 16 square miles or something. Southwest. Southwest, Southwest yeah. 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 Did you have a question, Patrick? Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, yes. and by the same uh, line of question that Ms. Johnson was asking, has race been used as one of these cohesive areas of interest that you can separate or uh, conclude on? Has the city traditionally done that to keep racial groups together? As we've used in the past, race, ethnicity can't be used of itself. However, the, um, I think the, when we went to six districts, there was some idea about creating a district that would have, and, and maybe I'm thinking about the county, uh, there, there was a move to get a, more of a representation there at one point. So, but in the past, uh, since I've been involved, that has been considered partisan data. And, and the reason for that is that, um, and if you look at the handout that I, that there are certain, certain things that, that can get a map in trouble from a legal standpoint. Um, one is partisan gerrymandering, the one is racial ger gerrymandering. So we're going to intentionally make this voting block all African American or all Hispanic or, or all something else. So, so that's why we have not historically provided you that data. So then there can't be any, any issues later that, well, we, we developed this so that we would have three Hispanic or three white or four white, um, it's just numbers. So I have a question to clarify. So we would not be able to use racial data to make sure that everyone is represented more? Or is it only to avoid le less representation? You would not be able to use the racial data to, I mean, the, the, the concept is one person, one vote. Yes. Um, when you start looking at race, then you get into the, well, I have 10 people, so they should all, all get the same representation from that district, regardless of their race. So, and, and I understand, and there, Stephen's right, because I went back and looked at a lot of the comments from 1990, and even the previous one, that, that there were concerns from the public that we needed to have a Hispanic represent, representative, we needed to have a certain um, level
level of, of, of diversity. And, and this process really doesn't look at that. This process looks at sheer numbers. Population. Population. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to the, and I share that concern, that you know we, we can only operate from the data from the census, um, which is why it's really important to get folks to, to complete that census data, because there may very well be more people in these districts, um, but, but we're left with the best data that we have, and that's been determined to be the census. Since you're not supposed to look at specifics, can you at least then provide, because we want to try and give those who want it at least the general information, can you give us the basic numbers? Like, for example, uh, the city has grown by 2% in the last 10 years. Um, the racial breakdown by the city, you know, we've got 10% African American, 6% Hispanic, or whatever it is, so that at least they have those figures. Perfect, yeah, if you could give yeah. us the city demographics, that way at least we have an idea what we're looking at so that we can say, okay, we wanna make sure that at least we understand, okay, the city is 10% African American, so let's make sure that we at least are being mindful of that yeah. without targeting. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that kind of help? Yeah, that's, that's just And I, I can direct everyone to a uh, report that we did. Uh, some of this information we put in this PowerPoint is from that. If you go to wichita.gov slash planning and click at the top where it says advanced plans and then go down in the little drop down there to census information, you'll find what we call the initial 2020 census profile report. And it has all of this data in there uh, overall, as well as maps. So you can at least kind of get a feel for what it looks like. It's just, and the, yes, they, and GIS has also created a, a open data portal uh, where you can review census information. Is that on the same? I'm sorry. That'd be great. Is that information though on this website that you just gave us? Yes. Link? Okay. Just yes. so we can look at it before you get it to us next meeting. Very good. Any other okay. questions for Stephen? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes, and, and I want to thank the staff for that. Um, for the, 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 the breakdown that they just had and, and come into that agreement. Madam Chair, my concern would be if we support or submit rather any maps to you that they not be based on racial demographics as the chair of the county commission uh, uh, redistricting committee, ad hoc committee that we did, uh, there was potential to get into fluffles about that. We'd like to avoid that at all costs here and make sure that we're doing things not on basis of race. Of course. Uh, but doing it on basis of what's best for our communities uh, within the four squares of what the charter says, uh, whether it be from committee members or from outside sources, uh, I think it'd make, it, make our job a lot easier. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to, to just add to that, you know, and I appreciate that, not developing this by race, but developing it by what's best for the community. I just think all of us are very cognizant, we're very familiar with Wichita, we're familiar with the neighborhoods, who resides in those neighborhoods, where the majority Hispanic districts are, where the majority uh, and black districts are, and I think that, I just wanna make sure that we, none of us are you know, doing anything that would make these by race by packing a certain district in a certain racial or ethnicity. Thank you. I think that's good information that we all need to be aware of when we're trying to make these decisions to bring the best suggestions back. And again, you know, we are just compiling information to try to present to the council so that they can make the final decision. So. I just greatly appreciate all your input. So, any other questions for Stephen? I, I would just like to say one more comment about the 2020 census here in Wichita because we've heard from other communities where there's been uh, questions about how well uh, minorities and, and different groups were represented in the final results of the census. We had really excellent coverage here in Wichita. 
Uh, I had a chance to go over, you know, square mile, quarter mile by quarter mile through the city looking at the housing counts and so forth, comparing them to our own data, and uh, everything was uh, really good in terms of uh, coverage. There were, there were a few little areas we notified census that uh, they had a bunch of people in a traffic island instead of in the apartment lot. <laughs> But those numbers won't affect what we're doing. We, we've compiled them to the election precincts, and so those are the building blocks we'll, we'll be going with. Very good. Did you have a question? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so I was wondering, once we have some initial maps, when on the county redistricting committee, um, the members were able to look at those maps as well as um, review them, alter them um, on, the, on a GIS platform that the county provided? Will that be so that we could see with, in real time population differences between the maps, between precincts, if we added or didn't? Um, I think that would be very helpful uh, even, even to look at now when asking where our head is or what our thoughts are initially to draw some maps. Is a platform like that or some technology like that going to be available to this commission? Yeah. and. Do we want to go ahead and, and have Mr. Kohlmeyer? I don't want to get too far oh, I'm sorry. off. Yeah, our... I didn't mean to jump ahead. I'm, I'm fine to wait. We'll have a demonstration later on in this meeting. Yeah. That's a yes. All right. Yeah. I just was. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Next up, I believe we're back to you, Scott. So hopefully this has been helpful so far, um, going over kind of the, the purpose, the ordinance, um, uh, what your charge is, and then going over the data about where uh, Wichita is as a whole in terms of population in the various districts. And uh, Stephen has gone into a little bit about the process, and so I just want to take this opportunity to check in with you and, first of all, uh, emphasize that you all are very much uh, you're the ones who have been appointed to this. You are very much the ones that are in the lead, and we are here as staff to support you and to answer questions and to help facilitate. But um, it's it's up to you all which direction you would like to go. And so Stephen has presented an idea of, you know, we've given you the precinct maps with the populations. We've uh, also got the ones with the council districts as they currently are. And that one opportunity that you have is that you could. Uh, go home and you could do some homework of drawing up some concepts about options that you would like to explore and then submit those. Um, so I, I want to check in and see, number one, if you all are comfortable with that process, if you would like to do something different, and B, is there something in addition or more, uh, in addition to that or something else that you would like to explore as part of this process? So it's really kind of two questions that I've got for you to make sure that we're meeting your needs to help you out the way that you need, that you might want assistance. Madam Chairwoman. Um, Scott, is it, in addition to what we might bring to the table, mm -hmm. would it be beneficial, and I also defer to the, my colleagues here, would it be beneficial for the staff to have a few maps that prioritize population equivalency um, that they, that staff can bring um, kind of similar to what the county did so that we have that option as well and maybe that's similar to what we're bringing to the table and already asking but um, for y'all to have that as well I don't think that wouldn't hurt as a part of the discussion to see uh, I'm sorry to put additional work on y'all but to see that um, drawn up by y'all and that we could consider as well would that be amenable are you just did you have a comment madam chair yes uh, I appreciate uh, the, the, what Texas is bringing forward. Uh, that was something that we found very helpful uh, to operate within the four corners and the four squares of uh, making sure one, one voice was one vote, population uh, density as well, uh, as we've seen at the state level, the federal level, uh, where we've done redistricting already, uh, as well as at the county level. So I think that is a tried and true precedent uh, that what we are supposed to be governed by would be exactly as we've discussed here already, uh, one voice, one vote, 
equal representation based off of that one-to-one, -one, as well as the compactness of the line so that we do not get into a gerrymandering situation uh, because this has to pass legal muster. Uh, that said, when the staff uh, with their tools generated those maps and those options for us to have the springboard of a discussion, it was quite helpful. Right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me just make sure that I'm understanding, I'm clear about what you're asking for. You would like them to, because they've got the capacity to do this, you would like them to come up with some options, different options for us, is that correct? Yes, I feel like, especially at the outset, that could be beneficial to the discussion. If that's possible and y'all are open to it, that is not to discount any of us bringing suggestions to them or editing or altering any of the maps that are initially proposed. Madam Chair, I, yes. I agree. I would love to see some maps that the city um, staff brings. My um, one thing that I was looking at um, comparing our city to other similarly sized cities uh, like Tulsa and Springfield, um, the addition of two additional districts um, bringing more representation down to a municipal level. Um, I didn't know if that's a possibility to explore during this, um, and maybe even if the staff could come up with one map that would explore that district or two maps that would explore that concept. Um, Madam Chair, in that. Yes. I would have opposition to what Mr. Gonzalez has just proposed uh, because that's nowhere in the charter, uh, nowhere in our, in our authority here with the county uh, to have eight districts. We are, uh, I think, if legal, you could t let me know, I think we're supposed to only have six districts. So that's not a question that we're here to pick up. Per the current charter, yes, we are. They would have to, the council itself, the existing council itself would have to amend the charter. And, and has I'm that not been sure done? They've got the, uh, excuse me. Has that been done? No, uh, I'm not sure that they've got the time frame, but again, I don't want to make extra work, but I, I had a conversation with Larry Wolgast, who was the uh, mayor of Topeka <coughs> during the time that I was mayor of Goddard, and he's stunned that we only have six represent, representatives um, Topeka has 12, and they're a third of our size. And so, again, I, I would just like to explore that option if it's not a lot of extra work for you guys. Well, Madam, Madam Chair, I would like to bring that, one second, John, I yep. would like to probably bring that to a vote if that's amenable to the rest of the group, but I think we had that discussion today with City Council about bringing on more members if uh, Topeka had more and however anybody else does it, this is how we do it down here uh, with the people that have been appointed. So I would not be in favor <clears throat> Real of quick. going outside the scope of our, of our charter where, that we have here at the county. Where would I, I didn't hear that discussion with the city council. Okay. But I just didn't know where it was. Was it at the meeting or? Yeah, you probably checked. Oh, no, I'm not talking the four, I'm not talking adding more members to this group. I'm, I'm, I was referring to what the chair said about adding more members okay. and that we, that other people have 12 or 13 members and we don't have that. For, that the, particular, dist for the district, That right? particular thing was already discussed today. It went down. Wait, I, I think I'm misunderstanding. I think there's a miscommunication. I, I'm not referring to more members in this Oh, and my comment wasn't directed toward what you were saying, towards what the chair was saying about additional have members. The ability and, to consider an extra two options. Right. So, two things. Number one, additional members that has already been discussed, that has already been voted upon, that's not an issue, shouldn't be raised in here. Number two, we only have six. That's what we actually have the charter for. As the chair has said, it has not been passed, so it's not something for us to discuss it either. So we're, we're confined into the six. We're talking about one-to-one -one vote, and we're talking about compactness of lines. I have a question for legal real fast. Uh, is there, if we were to go forward with getting a, uh, looking into adding two additional members, so what that would require is us to take that as a suggestion to the city council and then they would vote whether they wanted to add two additional members. Is that correct? Right. Is it against any there, type of rule there, for us to there, there propose that? There are that? a number of steps that would have to occur before the city council would get to eight. Okay. Um, actually, at least two charter board hearings would need to be held before the city council would get to eight. Okay. But that is a possibility that they could be changed. Yes. Now, now the issue is what is the scope of this group's um, charge? And there was no discussion um, during the council meeting, uh, either today or last week, about asking this group to look at eight districts. Um, without some sort of action by the city council as a whole, um, I, I don't believe legally that, that this group has that authority to, to branch out. Um, now, if that is an overall recommendation at the end of this process, um, that may or may not be appropriate depending Taking upon the will of the committee. Um, but, but I don't think that the current status um, allows the group to, to come up with, eight, with maps for eight districts. 
Okay, so that could be a recommendation at the end of this process that we could recommend to the city council. Yes, I yeah. think it could be. Okay. Um, but, but if we're talking about having multiple maps of six, six districts or eight districts or 10 districts or 13 districts, um, and from a from process standpoint, there's a number of ways to increase the, 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 the number of the city council. You can have some at, at large members um, in between redistricting. So, so to say we have eight council members does not necessarily mean that they would have to have eight districts. Mm -hmm. And those are really decisions left to the council as a whole. No, that's okay. fine. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, yeah, I get the intention to explore it, but what worries me is I've seen in so many cities, um, part of the good, bad, and ugly is you're always trying to figure out what's ideal representation, number as cities grow. But what stands out to me is we have six months here. Uh, we've been tasked with a certain objective, and as much as before the next redistricting commission meets in 10 years, <clears throat> over the next decade, we might want to explore city charter changes and have, bring a, have a community-wide discussion around that. Um, I haven't just heard in the last two meetings of the council, what I haven't heard until it was you know, referenced in passing, I think in, in an Eagle article potentially expanding, I hadn't heard a single uh, city council member or any conversation on RDAB or any other organization trying to push for a city charter change. And so what I worry about is within our time frame, doing it right, and then by rushing, if it's rushed on the expansion, um, and I've seen this happen in many cities, uh, where when you expand single member districts, for example, in a rushed way, it's often uh, gets kind of questioned for partisan gerrymandering or other things to see like something pushed through at the last minute before a deadline. I would like to see a re restructuring of the, the city council that is more representative and maybe even exploring alternatives um, like ranked choice voting, things like that over the next 10 years. Um, but I don't think rushing that or having that, you know, we can maybe put in aside like, hey, in the next decade, it's something we can look at. But as far as our commission and our tasking, I don't know if it's germane or even productive for us to, um, to then be dealing with and trying to juggle the priorities of a, a six member map or eight member debt map and the questions of, is that a super ward or is that an at-large ward and things like that? That's a huge discussion and a huge onus on us that will distract us from finding the best map for six districts, in my opinion. Madam Chair, if I may. Um, I, I would certainly say, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, I, res I respect where your vision is and certainly, Chair, I, I heard in terms of, of the growth and uh, even looking at the, the potential for, uh, but I would certainly say in terms of a, uh, a practice and execution in terms of what we were charged to in our diction and our duty, um, our focus should be upon what the current standards are of what we're looking at in terms of the city council with the six with the six districts. Um, now, if this body, after completing that work with the six, six districts, if there is a, a desire from uh, the majority to make that type of recommendation for the city council to look at going forward in terms of that type of expansion, I think that that would be a different conversation that we should have after our, our body of work is done for what we were charged here to do, and that right now is looking at the city within the six districts because uh, our, our time is limited, our resources are limited, uh, so it doesn't really do us any due diligence at this particular point to kind of go off into uh, things that may or may not happen because the council has a deadline, we have a deadline, so being focused on what our objective is, being focused on those six would be uh, my, my recommendation in terms of, of where we are and where we should be going. Thank you. Thank you. I, Mr. Whitmer was giving. Yep, yep, yep. I, I'd just like to echo what Lamont said. I, I, I come back to the, the justification for expanding. I'm a limited government person. Um, our population in Wichita, though growing, it's growing anemically in the last 10 years. We've only grown 2.43%. And to expand the city council by 20% to accommodate 2.43% population growth seems like it doesn't, the numbers don't add up for me. But either way, I'd love to have the conversation, but I don't think it fits what we've been assigned to do, which is six. But I do want, I, I think, I, I do like your idea of maybe looking at it after we've done it and giving them a recommendation if that's what we want to do. But I think we should focus on the task at hand. 
Thank you. Did you have another comment? Madam Chair, thank you for that. And I just wanted to clarify, uh, going with the, the previous speakers to include Mr. Whitmer, that is the clarification that I'd like to make. I'm not opposed to us bringing this up after we're done with our body work that we're charged here to do, and even put it to a vote uh, as a recommendation if uh, we uh, come up with one map uh, that we give back to the council uh, as our recommendation on, on how to move forward if we get consensus on that, and then have other recommendations such as what Mr. Gonzalez is saying for future uh, reference, and I, I, I'm not opposed to bringing that to a vote, not at all. Thank you. Very good. Um, any other comments? From my perspective, Mr. Whitmer, I'm a, I'm a not a limited government kind of person. I'm a customer service kind of person. I think you the are. reason um, government gets a bad name is people reach out and can't get people to representatives to call them back and have issues and they don't have anybody to, to express it with. So I was very happy when you proposed, but. I understand we are in a very limited time frame, and so it sounds like the will of the body that we don't want to um, have the consideration of two additional um, council people. So um, is there any other questions for Scott regarding this? I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm going to actually take us back um, just a little bit, which is about the staff maps, because I think it's been a really healthy and robust discussion about the eight districts and where I I think the general consensus, it sounds like where it's landing is to say let's uh, that you would like to do the charge of the six which are in the ordinance um, and then after following after that there could be a sounds like a discussion about whether or not a recommendation of concerning eight is appropriate but that's for a later date after the six the work of the six uh, districts has been done but what I want to do is step back to the um, staff uh, draft concepts, because I think Tex, you had brought that up. I think there were uh, three other folks on the committee who had said that, that, that they would like to see those. And so my question for the rest of you is that where the majority of you are, would you like to see staff come up with some, some draft concepts for you to kind of springboard off of? Would that be helpful? If, if you don't mind, when, when you guys were on the county commission, it seemed like, and I was looking at it from reading in the press, but just seemed like you were inundated with outside groups with maps. And it, I, I, I think you had a good idea. If they come up with a few, it narrows our focus. If we just start playing around with maps, who well, knows how many we could come up with? I, I want to clarify. I still think we should each develop our own yes. one or two maps, but yes. also have the option of the staff maps. I, I think so. them coming with some as well is a good idea. Um, and, and, and last time, staff came up with, I think, four or five maps. Okay. And, and some of them were just like, oh my God, we've never considered that. <laughs> <laughs> and mine was divided up like a pie. Starting to go out and that and um, so, so, yeah, I think, I, I think if you can, because you're right, if we all come back with 12 different maps, we're going to be here a while. Yeah. Um, and if you have staff come back with four or five and you don't like any of them, then tell staff what we want to do. And, and I think we're going to have a illustration of GIS which is, is completely awesome for this process because you can move a district over and figure out that oh we can't do that one and you can precinct over um, yeah. to, to, to get to that right number. And what I would propose is um, if you all go home and you, you come up with some maps and you share those with us that we're going to be able to do some analysis on those prior to your next meeting and then we will also, if you wish, have the staff options. And we can post all of them on the wall. And even if you bring in some late, like you don't get them done by the deadline, but you want to show them, we can put everything up on the wall and we can talk about them. But for the ones that we've done the analysis on, we'll be able to give you the, some of the metrics and numbers that go with that. But what I'd, I'd like to see is if there are any common themes that you all um, kind of gravitate towards, and then that can help us kind of narrow the scope from like this huge variety of maps to what are the ones that really resonate with you and you think are worth exploring further. And we kind of do this, this process where we kind of keep marching through the, the different options. I, 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 for me, it was communities of interest and neighborhood associate, neighborhood, not necessarily associations, but neighborhoods, the concept of keeping. Their identity. Yeah. Yes. The, yes. That, I mean, those of us who've lived in, I mean, we lived in Riverside. and. And so you've got to feel the people who live around, uh, you know, friends or or uh, Newman University, those areas, and and people they like. There's a feel. I live in West Wichita. We got a, you know, we're Westies. We don't like Easties. 
You, you know what I mean? It's just kind of, there's a feel to it. South Wichita is the same kind of thing, so I kind of like the idea of keeping communities of interest together. Sure. Sure. Scott, uh, I apologize if like, sure. you all draft five maps and then we're like, oh, none of these are good, but I, I think you all coming in with a map kind of tasking with, especially with your expertise and the IT expertise uh, that keeps the neighborhoods together, mm -hmm. addresses the problem, gives us a few examples of these are the tightest population equivalency differences we can get so that the vote, vote voters impact, vote impact would be the same um, as close as possible. That was very helpful because there were a number of maps the county drew that we were like, no, um, everyone's kind of in agreement, no, but there were a few that took that charge as tight as possible and then we could have discussions around those that then helped us frame, I think, where we ultimately compromised. So I think that why, that's, that's what I think would be super beneficial around population equivalency. And it, it's easy for me to commit staff, so I'm gonna actually <laughs> look at the staff and say, um, is this something that sounds workable for developing you know, four, maybe five different scenarios? And, and what I would venture to say is that, as Sharon has indicated, some of them may be um, uh, ones just to get people thinking, so there may be options that you know, maybe yeah. <laughs> so, I so, like pie. So, um, pie sounds good to me. And then that will help us once we get a sense of what your what what better fits your where you think the community should be where we should be heading for the benefit of Wichita. Then we can kind of you know dial in those options yeah. and explore some of the tweaks here and there. Do you have a question, Madam Chair? Uh, if I may uh, make another recommendation for the body. Uh, when we did the county commission piece, we had um, we had a lot of, of mechanisms to gather uh, input from the community as well, without becoming inundated with said input. Uh, and that those were recommendations, as Tex was bringing up, on the maps that uh, the county had already posted online, so that the community could see it, make recommendations on it, and we took that input into heart as we went through it. And I think that was beneficial. So I would appreciate if um, that's something that we could do, get a zero balance map that has it as tight as possible with zero deviation. Let's see what that looks like as a springboard for conversation. And uh, those tweaks that you can do all the way up within the threshold of the plus or minus five, whatever that might look like, if, if it's moving this uh, district or, or this line or whatever the mm -hmm. case might be. I think those options would be uh, healthy for us to have as a springboard for discussion. Madam Chair, I would also recommend um, that we have transparency in the maps that are brought in by the members. Uh, if they're coming from city council members, we need to know that uh, because uh, those were some of the maps that the county commission, we unanimously agreed to uh, cut out immediately that were submitted by county commissioners. Uh, so I would like to see that as a matter of transparency because we're not here to push agendas. As uh, Mr. Anderson said, we're, we're not here for political agendas. Uh, as well as outside groups. Uh, there were a number of different groups that would try to Trojan horse in their map variant under the cloak of coming in with a, with a member of the ad hoc committee. I think transparency uh, and accountability is first and foremost. So uh, if that's the will of the body, I would like to see that happen in, in this uh, committee as well. Thank you. I'm just curious, how would you know if somebody trotted oh, in they, a Trojan they said it. horse? They said it. It's on camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did. Okay. I, I don't know if you watched, but it was interesting. Uh, David Dennis's maps got thrown out. Lacey Cruz's got thrown out. It was interesting to watch. But independent, you said independent groups were with a private in agenda. How, how would you know that? They admitted it. They admitted it on, on camera, yes, ma'am. Okay. That's um, I would hope that we would admit it on, on camera as well here. Okay. Madam Chairwoman, something else that might, Mr. Penn reminds me uh, with the county process, thinking about it, not just transparency, but also community feedback. I know we're gonna take this out to the DABs and get additional public feedback before it goes to the council, but I was, wasn't sure, are y'all planning, if the staff is planning to have um, a comment portal um, that's going live as soon as now um, for feedback on this that we can compile and then review the, the comments uh, each meeting um, and get in a nice digest form. That was very helpful, especially seeing some uh, feedback around some of the maps in Riverside on the county process. So I would like to welcome that so that we include as, mi as much feedback from different individuals in the community and organizations in the community to the work we're doing. 
If I can, um, what we can do is come back at the next meeting with uh, an explanation of different public input options and see if that fits the bill. So Perfect. probably be the best step, I think, there. Okay. Madam Chair, if I, if I may very briefly. First, I, I, at the county level, I kept Commissioner Dennis's and here to speak up for himself. So it was it was Commissioner Howe and Commissioner Cruz. It was a Commissioner Dennis. Is like, so it was Commissioner Dennis's like, so it But certainly, um, I want to say that that's the, uh, I, I just want to emphasize and, and, and really just drive home to that point, the importance of having the city staff to be able to create um, unbiased maps because that's what our purpose here is for this it's not political agenda or anything it's about looking at, at data and about looking at efficiencies that are truly putting Wichita in the best position to Absolutely. be its best version so having maps from city staff that are looking at this data uh, from an unbiased ob objective that is just clearly focused on the numbers and that's what was at the county level some of those maps were clearly just focused on the numbers and then it was up to us as a commission to go through and decipher through some of those data points and some of those maps and some of those maps we we, we kicked out because it was it was splitting up communities of interest and things of that nature uh, but we made adjustments applicable to that but it goes back to that point they were not looking at uh, any any things of, in terms of uh, what was going to be the best benefit for one particular group or another it was simply based upon the numbers and from that perspective, we were able to really hone in and, and get something that was beautiful, that, that we feel it was beautiful for the county level. So, and, and to that point to uh, public engagement, uh, I'm a big believer in that. I, I hope that those data points uh, and those windows are open because uh, the community to have as much input in this process that we can not just take back to the dabs and push on our city council people uh, to take back to the dabs, but for the, the general public at large to be able to have a voice in this process. Uh, that is that is the process of democracy and what we're doing here. So um, I'm a big supporter of that as well. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that is all of our goal. We, we really want to, this to be a very open and transparent um, process, and we want as much feedback and, and input from the people because that's who we serve. So Amen. it's critical that we have their input. Um, again, I don't want to make a huge amount of work for city staff because if you get if you're having to weed out. We'll get a lot of um, people with some very interesting perspectives <laughs> from public input. So, and that's part of the reason I think we wanted to just kind of have this first meeting and really not include citizen comments because it would we'd be here till ten. So, um, I, uh, Scott had asked me about putting uh, citizen comment on the agenda, and I said let's hold off and maybe do that one or two meetings into it. So, do we have any other questions or comments for staff to guide them? Just one other housekeeping note. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one other housekeeping note. In the interest of, as, as you just said, and I fully support you on that, uh, making sure that we have a timeline to get these in. We don't want to drag this out. I think we did our work uh, in about three weeks' time with the help of staff as the jump-off point uh, to consider, and we got unanimous uh, consent uh, and unanim uh, unanimous vote. Uh, 15 members I think we had at the time. So I, I'm more than confident that we can do the same here in a uh, four week window uh, because this is a little bit tougher of a nut to, to crack. Uh, I wouldn't want to see this go on too long. And in that same regard, uh, we can also make sure that we make our time deadlines on submission of maps either from individual members or from the staff so that we can have, start having productive conversations without things continually being added into the mix, a new submission. Right. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Anyone else? If not, I think, are you next, Scott? Yes, next steps. Yeah, next steps. So I think we've really um, talked, had a pretty robust discussion about that. I would just remind everyone, we've. it sounds like everyone is very cognizant of the amount of time. The goal here is to get a uh, preliminary recommendation uh, by August 31st. So I think that fits in line with a little bit more than the, what, four or six weeks, somewhere around in there. So. Um, so to that end, um, we would like to know what your preferred uh, meeting dates and times are. And I know that we've done a doodle poll. And Steve, do you want to report on the results of that? Yeah, from the doodle poll, it looks like uh, all seven of the uh, commissioners did uh, report to that. and. Uh, Wednesday, everyone said Wednesday, seven on Wednesday, uh, fewer on the other days. Thursday, I think, was a little bit higher. I know two people had issues with Tuesdays going forward. Uh, not many people liked Friday. 
<laughs> Imagine that. So um, then that would put us at uh, next week would be Wednesday the 20th. Does that sound right to everyone? I had to whip out my phone. <laughs> yes, Madam Chair, will we have a, a Zoom link available to tie in? I will be out of town uh, next week. I hope so because I'm going to be out of town in August. In August, so, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Yes. Thank you for so, that. Um, Go to me. Would those meetings still be at 4:30, or is it an option of switching times? Did we um, did we con did we talk about time? No. I haven't is 4:30 convenient for everyone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's convenient. Yes. I can try to make it work. I work in El Dorado, and I work till five generally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we want to bump what's, it up to five? What's best for you? Um, five or 5:30 would be better for me personally. Is is going to be an issue for us getting into this building at 5:30? Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll work that out with security. Okay. Yeah. So, is everybody in agreement? Can we do five thirty? Is that okay? How late are we going to be going if we go to five? I'm hoping I can keep us to an hour, hour and a half. You think? Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. That's that's about what we did, All right, guys? I think it's about what did you guys do at the county? We did about, about an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Right. Okay. More robust discussion was an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's at least plan on that for the next go round. Um, we'll look at uh, what I say. My phone keeps blipping out. The 20th, uh, Wednesday the 20th at 5.30. And um, please, if, that, if you have a conflict, something comes up, please get in touch with either myself. Um, a very healthy discussion and getting some good work done for our city council and helping them do what they need to do. Madam Chair, before yes, we, if I may, yes. I know that um, just for housekeeping, again, some members who may uh, not be able, may be able to be present, uh, and they may be by Zoom links, there will not be any restrictions pertaining to those members uh, being able to vote. Like, there won't be any, uh, you have to be here in person to be able to cast if some of our members are unable to be here. Will they still be able to I, I serve reposition? So. Is that, yes. Okay. Yes, because, I mean, I think being physically present is part of the, um, um, ordinance, but at the same time, I think a presence, is, whether it's via Zoom or whatever, electronically, um, because that's basically making us um, powerless. So, yes, if we, if our vote doesn't count, that's, it's not worth being a part of this group. Thank so, you. Yes, thank you. And, and my gentle pushback on that, Madam Chair, not to uh, be contentious or contrary, but it is a uh, a vote is something that is important, mm -hmm. and you must make all due diligence to be there for that. I would recommend if we could uh, somehow split that. Uh, you must be present for a vote, uh, but you hold a vote until it, as long as communicated all those members if they can. So suppose next week I'm out. Mm -hmm. Don't call a vote on that week that you know I'll be out. Okay. You see? Okay. I understand. Uh, but yes. we schedule votes for when we know that the, the body will be present uh, so that all members are here. And if by some, uh, as we ran it on the county piece, uh, if by some extenuating or unmitigated circumstance that you couldn't be present, you have to go back through and have someone replace you properly and duly sworn in to take that vote for you uh, versus a proxy or anything like that. Uh, because this is important work. Uh, we've been called here to do it. I personally would like to see everyone present. That's kind of how uh, we do it in the State House as well. You have to be on the floor for your votes. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to listen in or for whatever reason you can't be there for that portion, I think that we can come to an agreement on that. If you're going to schedule votes, uh, let us know, and that way we make every effort to be here for it. I think. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying. I think uh, scheduling votes when people will be here is important. But if for some reason somebody can't be here and we have to take a vote because we're running short in time, I don't want to restrict us to where we can't take a vote in proxy. Is that right? Even if need be, they can take a vote via Zoom. Well, I'll leave it to the to the body if that's a if that is an item that we want to vote upon uh, for as far as our, our governing rules. Uh, and I'm glad that he brought it. Yeah, yeah. What's the, yeah. What is the issue with a vote uh, on Zoom? I mean, we're swearing people in over Zoom. We're 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 having other board meetings. I understand the preference in person. I get it. That's always like the preference, even when we serve on other boards in the community. But it's sometimes these votes may happen organically, and there will be motions that will happen at these meetings, so, and I was, I was clear when I was asked to serve on this commission on some of my dates that I was gone and was assured that regardless of the date, like, and that's why I emailed you all transparently to say, hey, there's really only a few days where I absolutely can't be on even virtually, but I would hope that we, we could be 
accepting of any of our schedules if we have to do a vote. Now, final adoption, the final meeting, I would love to, like, we just need to make sure on the same page and we're all there in person, or maybe, and maybe even the meeting before, but we'll have, an, I am sure, a number of motions and discussions and, and rules and things like that as we go forward that I would like the body to be accepting of uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom votes. I don't mind a Zoom vote, but. Well, do we need to put it to a vote? I was gonna say, should we do a motion yeah. for this? Sure. Do you want to make a motion that um, if we, if a member has to be, um, we have to be at least present electronically via Zoom or whatever, but we can, we can vote. vote Zoom. We don't have to physically be present unless it is a final, like the wrap-up vote when we're voting on what we're submitting to the council. Are you making that motion? Well, yeah, yes, I'll, second I'll make that motion. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? If you were going to make it, I guess. <laughs> okay. Can we a roll call vote, or can we just say aye or nay? Count for moves. Aye. aye. All in favor, aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. You are opposed? Okay. That, uh, whoever, <laughs> are you making notes, Scott? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. look at me. Uh, my handwriting is terrible. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I was pointing at him. Sorry. I guess I My do. wife can't even read my handwriting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, then do we have anything else? Th Any there other? is, there yes. is one more thing, yes, and I please. apologize. Um, but we had told you that we were going to demonstrate some of the technology that's available. And so if we could do that demo Certainly, real quick. Yes, yes, yes. So, Mike, I'll turn it over to you. I'll try to make this quick. I know we have a six o'clock end date to this. You have ten minutes. I even minimize this. <laughs> God, I even minimize this. I'm the technical guy, and I don't know how to minimize it. You can grab it by those dots and then move it. There you go. Oh, that didn't help. <laughs> yeah, no, all right, can do. Showing a lot of confidence in my uh, technical expertise for this committee. You're the IT guy, right? Yeah, kind of. Sure. Okay. All right, so. Um, this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using the redistricting app. And also, you had mentioned about the county side. I'm very aware of what they, they were able to accomplish for you guys. Um, many of the times, they had developed a lot of the scenarios and put them out on a dashboard. So you can actually view all of the scenarios within that framework. That's the plan for us in the case of once we have those uh, scenarios placed, we'll put it out there for that. But then think of every scenario that you have as a working scenario. So everything that we have, we can still mold it and shape it and move it around and, and change certain areas and modify and tweak certain locations if we have to. So giving an example of that, uh, coming in here, this is the, uh, this is the application we're gonna be using, it's redistricting 3SRI. Um, and as you can tell, these are the target deviations, which are the total numbers, as well as the percentages right here. So obviously with two being out, what you can do with this application, move through on it, is that we would actually say, let's say that we want to move in these two districts right here from uh, District 2 into District 1. I can show you how easy it is for the process to take place on this. So we would actually move it here, and I'm going to identify. Because we're utilizing brand new, um, brand new uh, districts and all that stuff, it's gonna be a little slower process where we actually have to move one district at a time. We can't grab a large group of them. So that's why we ask you ahead of time if we can get the scenarios ahead of time from you so we can actually develop these plans and put them out there so once we um, you analyze them on the dashboard, you wanna look at this one a little closer, we can bring it into this environment and actually show you what can happen if we just move this district here or something like that. So here I just wanna see what happens if I move this particular district in from two to one. And I sign it. Hold up. Uh, source district, I apologize. Flip flopped them. Okay, so that's what happens. You can actually see where the numbers have been modified within that. And uh, so you can tell now that District 2 is within that particular percentage if need be. And we can move them right back, obviously, so. And the numbers have gone back to where they were. So this will be the process that we work through once we've isolated which scenarios you would like to further analyze on this. And we'll open up into this and be able to kind of move things around and tweak it and 
Um, once all these plans are in place, then also we'll be providing those out um, in a dashboard format so you guys can review those as well as the public can as well. Any questions on this? Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as I asked before when we did this, uh, the tool, is it manipulative by us and the public or is it just distributed and posted for us to review? Um, the scenarios are going to be posted in a dashboard concept, not this application. This is not a the application. application, so we're kind of restricted on the license. So it's kind of, it's good. I got to run it for you. You're all over it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, one other quick question. The granularity that that shows, does it go down? Do you have a, uh, a skin that shows you HOAs and things of that nature, street level? And yeah, we know that um, we're splitting hairs for numbers there. Apologize for interrupting you there. Um, uh, the, uh, so if you're interested in the neighborhood association, let's see what kind of impacts these are gonna have. I can turn these on and you can actually view where the neighborhood associations are as well. And we can also toggle the labels on that. So that's rockers. It's outside the rockers area. It's just not gonna be impacted by that. I do not have homeowner associations in here. I didn't, I forgot to add those in there. So I apologize. So I'll get those in there uh, for the next meeting itself. So we have that as- You um, would have HOAs and neighborhood in there? Yeah, we'll have HOAs included on that. That won't be an issue. Um, so we'll have HOAs in the neighborhood, and we'll be able to toggle them back off and on um, and uh, turn these off and bring the district back in. We should be able to also toggle these so you're able to have not only the, uh, the election districts but the numbers, but if you don't like that, um, we can turn on just precincts only or we can also turn on population only. So you can just go through the raw population figures once it comes up. So will we have access to the software while we're creating our own maps? No, this is okay. a licensed software, so okay. you know, it's, it's expensive. So, so uh, we're kind of sticking to one license and we'll be able to analyze and, and develop those scenarios once you've uh, submitted those. But are you and or staff available if you want to sit down with us one-on-one -on -one and go through this and help us so that we could have something physically to bring to the rest of the group and, no? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Madam Chair. Else group? Yes. yes. Well, um, did, did we ever, uh, for clarification and standpoint, um, come to an agreement with how we are going to identify if we are bringing in maps from in outside groups or if something is being introduced? Um, or are we working on a system of, of honor and, and integrity? Or, or how is that process going to be fully vetted in terms of knowing? or a map submission may or may not have come from. That's a good question. Does anybody have an answer for him? I'm just curious what this is all about. I can't imagine somebody pushing me to submit a map. How did it happen at the county? Did they just well, and again, I, you would know that, and I, I would hope you would disclose to us that um, my homeowners association would like to see this or whatever. I, I can't fathom. I would tell whoever approached me about that I'm very uncomfortable with this no I can't do it I'll, I'll bring your thoughts to the group but I would not ever bring a map and call it my own that somebody else had asked me to I wouldn't either and I think I, I honestly think most of us would not so does do you have a problem if we just go on the honor system does anybody how did it happen at the county I mean was I know like the Eagle reported the League of Women Voters had given you maps, and is that what you're talking about? Is those kinds of groups that prevented, presented you with well, maps? Well, at the county level, we, we knew, like staff, staff generated maps, and then we, we specifically knew the maps that were generated by county commissioners, and those were the maps that, that, we, that were eliminated first because of, of political ideologies being in place with those components of those maps. So we knew exactly where those submissions came from. So, and, 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 I, and I only ask that because going through that process at the county, being able to identify and know that helped bring cohesiveness to our, to our group, to our unit, because we knew what maps we were working with. We knew who submitted what and what it was about. And, and so we were able to coalesce around those ideas of, okay, we've moved these maps that maybe are not beneficial for the county. Maybe they have some type of 
uh, leaning one way or the other, so now we can get down to the maps that are just purely based upon the numbers that we can make the best decision for the county. Um, so having that, that transparency of knowing uh, was, was a big group builder in terms of trust within our group, which I think went a long way with us being able to solidify a 15-0 vote because we all had that trust factor going in and we knew where maps were and were not coming from. So that, that, that's my only uh, question, causation, and concern. Um, I, just, I, just don't, I just want everybody to be equally represented and to feel comfortable in what they're submitting and to be able to stand on what they're submitting and, and not leave this process with any type of ill will or intent um, because of uh, maybe other things are in, in play. So, I mean, if we're working on the honor system, that's fine. I just want to put that on the, on the record so if that's what we're doing, then that's, that's okay but just so that it's stated for clarity and purpose. Well, I appreciate your input because I was not involved in the county process, and so this is all news to me. So um, do you all have thoughts about what uh, we could do to prevent that? I, I really... Well, I actually have a question. Sharon, would this group uh, fall under the city's ethics policy that the other boards fall under? Yes. That should be enough to keep us in line. Um, if somebody's willing to be uh, found to have committed an ethical violation, um, and if you aren't familiar with the city's ethics policy, I'd encourage you to look at it. Thank you. And I, Madam Chair, if I may, I completely concur with everything Mr. Anderson said. That was our experience, as you did see reported uh, as well. If you watch back at the video, we had one member who was a vice president or chair of the League of Women Voters, uh, and you had uh, Commissioner Lacey Cruz sitting behind her, uh, and she submitted a map, and she could not explain it to the group. Uh, and she made mention that she did it as a favor to or at the direction of, and that's when the commissioner said, hey, they did it as a favor to me. Uh, the same thing happened when the League of Women Voters used that individual to try to submit a map into the ad hoc committee as well. Again, could not explain it because it wasn't about political agendas. Uh, it was about making sure that we were doing the right thing for the county. Uh, that's the, that's the only thing that I know, and as, as, uh, Javon, uh, as Mr. Lamont has said, that went a long way to making sure that everyone had a comfortability uh, when considering those maps, knowing that the objective of it was clean and pure, uh, and that's why we went with what the staff uh, created as the jump off. That was why we raised the issue and the question in the county commission piece to get rid of all of the maps that were submitted by anyone from right, left, indifferent, any commissioner. Uh, and all of those fell by the wayside as well to streamline that process. So uh, ethics be as, w as what it is, uh, that's something that we really need to take in consideration and make sure that it's not happening with this board. So I, I watched those, but obviously I wasn't there. Was there any secret maps that were sent in that nobody disclosed that they were from different groups? Or was all the maps that were presented that were from outside groups, was it all told that they were from outside groups? Yeah, because uh, yeah, it seems like there's concern that maybe somebody will submit a map that's from an outside group and like claim it as their own. Well, it's ask on the county what, side. What, of I'm thing. sorry. What the concern is that that I, at least I have is is that the the process is prolonged uh, if we don't lock down uh, from the outset. How many maps we're supposed to submit from the uh, yeah. staff, uh, and whether or not the maps that we and I don't have. Honestly, well, I don't my, have a problem. My question, if, though, was 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 any maps that were submitted were there any of them like was there was this an issue on the county side or did everybody who submitted outside maps do they all disclose that they were outside maps? I'm just trying to figure out if this is an actual issue or if this is just a possibility that we're exploring. The the ones that were submitted by the people who were on the panel, they could explain and they generated those and they could detail and explain it, the way that it popped up and came up to us was that the individual who brought that map could not do those things, that they were just ba basically being a mule for an outside organization. So nobody to tried to sneak a map in a that an outside organization did. No, because at the wrong. end of the day, what we actually whittled down in the process was down to the number of uh, a number of maps, and all of those maps had been generated by okay. the staff anyway. So uh, hence, that's why I'm saying, that's, let's just do the ones that, yeah. that the staff has. Well, and that's what I, that's what I thought happened. I watched it, but I, because of the Concern. I'm thinking maybe I missed <laughs> I missed something during that meeting, but I, yeah, I we're just I trying, most we're just trying to keep it clean and, and, yeah. and keep it efficient. That's all. Madam, Madam Chairwoman, I, I, to make I guess to make uh, action off of this concern, um, and so that beyond just beyond the discussion we're having here, 
um, would it be appropriate and would, would the commission be open to uh, a motion that that we expect that if any of us put forward a map or alter a map that's at the direction or advice from any council member or the mayor, including any map that staff presents and it's not disclosed by the member of this commission or the staffer, then that would be an ethics violation. Are you making is that, that is that would I feel like that kind of encapsulates us taking that stance on that regardless of which would any council member to make sure that any council member or if the mayor was involved in this process in any way to show that transparency as well as that separation that we're on the same page with that transparency and that if it's found out that there was yeah. um, such discussions or such guidance then then we believe that that does and automatically you, warrant an ethics violation if you're making that motion i'll second that motion because i do think it's important that the council members that uh, appointed us do not have say in the maps that we're presenting so if it is a motion i'll second it okay so please i'm saying i'll reward can, it then I, yeah please clarify um, it for me that we expect members of this commission and we also expect s staff who are putting forward recommend their own maps or edit alterations to maps would disclose if any of those actions were guided or communicated and recommended by council members or mayor to disclose that. And non-disclosure of that would be an ethics violation or and inappropriate. I think you can say I think you need to add that. This group as an ethics violation. Would be perceived by this group as an ethics violation. Okay. I apologize. I think okay. you need to add that. And oh, outside organizations. Friendly amendment if, if, the, if the gentleman sure, sees it a friendly amendment, outside organizations as well are included in. Okay. Sure. So that would cover outside part, organizations yeah. would include any. It's a broad term. I just want to make it's sure a, that we're a, being. It's a broad term. This is, as uh, Mr. Anderson has said, it's supposed to be apolitical. We're here for apolitical uh, appointees to city council, correct? Those, these, runs, these races are run apolitical, right? Or nonpartisan, I should say. There we are. <laughs> I see John laughing. Sure they are. Uh, therefore, any partisan group, Cedric County GOP, Cedric County DNC, League of Women Voters, Spaghetti Monster Company, whoever. Campaign organizations. There we are, campaign organizations, whatever the case might be, PACs, whatever it is, whoever it is that influences you or tells you to bring the thing in here, be open and honest chamber. with it. That's the chamber, whoever. Uh, I agree. I would, I would rather that it's our general input based off of what the staff is doing. That's the cleanest way, as we found in the county commission piece, and for us to have those discussions. Uh, but there is a lot of wiggle room that uh, you could do with this thing. And I think, uh, Ms. Johnson, d the motion, does it comport with what you know city ethics rules to, to be in alignment with? I, I, would, I would say so, wouldn't you, Sharon? I defer to your judgment. <laughs> Sorry, coming in hot there, I apologize. Policy, but, but I do think that you can make a motion that that would be perceived, perceived by yeah. this group as a violation of the city's ethics policy. Right. You could file a complaint. Right, and I think it gives, it gives teeth to a complaint. Good point. Yeah. Right, to the ethics commission. That's why I wanted to do it. It gives okay. teeth to a complaint. I, just for clarification, if somebody were to file a complaint, how would that be investigated or handled? I'm just worried that somebody would make a, a you know an accusation yeah. against somebody else. I could this say that before, yeah. Marcy got a map from the mayor, and I know it because I know the mayor. And you know, I, I just want to make sure that nobody's getting I, I, victimized here. Correct. And, and I think the first step would be to have that discussion here, um, and and to allow the person who's I hate to use the word accused, but so I come and I have a map that my city council worked with representative said, I want that one passed, um, which has not happened since I've been involved in this process, and I'll look at Stephen. Um, you know, will we have city council members attend these meetings? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, are they allowed the floor? Not since I've been involved in this process. They can certainly listen, just like anybody else. Um, but I, I think the process would be that, that if there is that sort of allegation that this group needs to talk about that first, Mm -hmm. um, and then the next step would be to file a complaint with, with the ethics group or board, um, which is run, and Janice can have to correct me, through, through the, the city manager or through, through the city council office as well as my office is involved in that process. Okay. And because that's my concern is I, I agree. I don't think any um, – it's appropriate. I mean, I guess if you want to bring it and tell us that it's from a council member, that's fine. I personally don't – Think it's appropriate that council members give us really 
their direction on these. Um, I guess my concern is just how that might be churned as a weapon against other members of this committee. So oh, I, I, I'm trying not to open Pandora's box here. I'm more with this motion is to put uh, our understanding and our commitment to that transparency. The spirit of this body. Uh, the spirit of the body is for that transparency because, um, and it's more the incentive for us to put forward that and be transparent. Um, like I, and hopefully if you didn't mention it and then we bring it up in discussion, I think that's what legal's trying to say, we could just resolve it here. And that if, if it's like, oh yeah, I, I remember um, hearing you know, that so-and-so is in favor of this, this council member is in favor of this, or that this map was influenced by this council member, I feel like that's not even a partisan thing um, at yeah. all. So, I, I, but I'm, I don't, I don't want to open up some political bickering or gamesmanship with that. In, in all fairness, motion. who will know their districts better than these council members? So I don't think there's anything wrong with Asking Brandon Johnson advice. being able to say, yeah. hey, you know what, this is a great area of my district, and I think he should be able to give us some advice. So I think you make a fair point. There's nothing wrong with Brandon Johnson being able to make, and I'm not singling out Brandon Johnson, but there's nothing wrong with... Brian Fry saying, hey, by the way, I, my district needs to shrink a little, here's a suggestion. And I think your point is fair in that that shouldn't then immediately make that map invalid because Brian, because well, he knows his district. Yeah, no, but I, I think what you're wanting is just to make sure that we disclose, yes. hey, by the way, I, I drew up this map, but Brian Fry did make a suggestion because he knows his district. Well, that's, that's kind of what you're that's saying? That's not my point. My point is uh, that, ethics violation being used as a weapon against somebody on this committee in that, hey, I don't like you for whatever reason, so I think that, you know, I'm going to accuse you of whoever your council member is, you know, telling you that's their map. So that's, that's my concern about this, is that putting that restriction on could be weaponized, and I'm uncomfortable we're with that. I, I, guess, I hope. Uh, is there <laughs> some consequence, though, for, um, for on the ethics, that, that, um, no, yeah. that, that where someone just files it without really any evidence or rationale? Mm -hmm. um, but but anyone could file it, um, and maybe it's it's a more friendly motion that the expectation of this group is that if there is council input, that that council input is disclosed, mm -hmm. and including with staff uh, bringing forward any maps. I, I I think my initial gut was around I don't want that one of us brings forward a map, and it it is just complete. It's a map that was completely teed up by a council member or the mayor or even one of the political parties. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. I get we'll get feedback throughout the process from uh, the council members who know the districts, the neighborhood associations, but yeah, I'm not trying to, I'm more just wanting to have a spirit of transmer, transparency and a commitment to that with the motion. So can you clarify your motion? Well, um, and, and feel free to help me, <laughs> hence the perceived. Um, I think I was, I think the original motion was that members of this commission would disclose if any of the maps or alterations of maps have been directed, um, recommended, or communicated to them by a council member or the mayor, and that also we would like that to extend to staff drawing any maps, that that would be, and, and they didn't disclose it, that would be perceived as, an, as unethical, as an ethics violation. Would that work? And then there was a friendly amendment. Oh, and for organizations as well. Yeah. So I guess I forgot. Outside I, organizations and corporations. I would second that. If I guess you already did. No, I'll let you second it. Okay. It's okay. been moved and seconded. It's been probably moved. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. aye. Any aye. opposed? Thank you. Thank and you. Sorry about that. I, just, I think it was good to have that at the outset. There's a I reason we call it sausage making. <laughs> Well, I think it's important that we're all comfortable with this process and nobody has any lingering, oh my gosh, we didn't cover that, and so what are the expectations? So I'm, I'm pleased that you brought it up because like I said, a lot of us don't, didn't have familiarity with what went on with the count, uh, county. So um, again, thank you for your input. Anything else? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Move. Second. Second. Move and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Let's go. Aye. aye. <laughs> Thank you all Thank very you much. All. Thank you, Madam Chair.